Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And we are getting ready to read Psalms 18, verses 38 through 41. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. This is pertaining to our enemies. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. For thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies. Remember those four words, necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. All right. Now, sometimes we don't realize how God handles those that rise up against us. But remember his word says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And we are getting ready to read Joshua chapter 10. So when your enemy rises up, as the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against your enemies. All right, listen, Joshua chapter 10. Now, this is a story, and I want you to hear it. I'm not reading the whole story. I'm reading until verse 26. The rest pretty much just reaffirms, but 1 through 26 to me is the punchline of all that God will do to handle your enemies and mine. Remember, God is in control. God is all powerful. God is the ultimate authority. All right, listen. <laughs> oh, I love this story. Now it came to pass when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty, whereof Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hohem, king of Hebron, and Paran, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up with me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. I love this story. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, and I say unto you, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel. Now, for those of you who are not used to King James uh, terminology, that means he had them shaking in their boots. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Bethoron and smote them to Ezekah and unto Mekeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down of Bethoron that the Lord cast down, check this out, 
I, I, you got to hear this. Verse 11 is a trip. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Bethoron that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Ezekiah, and they died. They were more which died with the hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Ain't that a trip? Did God show out or what? Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day, when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still. I got to read that correctly. Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou, moon, in the valley of Ahalon. Now listen, God made the sun and the moon stand still all day long. Is God able to fight on your behalf? Does God have your back or not? Verse 13. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Before I go any further on this, sometimes your prayers are too limited. Your faith is too small because you forget the powerful God you serve and what he's capable of doing. Now, from Pat's two cents, back to the word. Hmm. All right. Verse 16. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave of Makeda. And it was told Joshua saying, the five kings are found hid in a cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. And they excuse me, and stay ye not, but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God had delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into the fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Mekeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. They finally got the memo. That's me. Okay, 22. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. 23. And they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. Sound familiar? And they came near, put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. I'm stopping there because that's the main point of it. Look how God came through. Look how God helped them win. He sent hailstones from heaven to handle the biggest portion of their enemies. You have no idea the types of intervention God is able, he's capable of. 
Because his ways are above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. So there's no finding out of all that he's able to do. But you have to ask God to raise your sights. So when you pray for God to deliver you from your enemies, no matter what form they take, physical, tangible, or non-tangible, invisible, whether they be people or entities, whether they be principalities or powers, no matter what, God is able to do so far beyond what your little imagination can even rise to. But ask God to broaden your scope so that you can pray the bigger prayers. You can pray for miracles, for miraculous intervention. Because no matter how big you pray, it's a small thing for God to do. Ain't nothing but a thing. Nothing to it but to do it. That's all God's got to do. And it's done. So when you find yourself in a situation where you feel powerless, when you find yourself battling spirits of Jezebel and they're intimidating you and they're frustrating you and they're messing with your peace, they're disturbing the peace and they got you shaking at your knees, wondering if you should speak or not, wondering if you can speak or not. You better go to God with that, baby, because if God tells you open your mouth wide, he, that means he will fill your mouth with whatever words that need to come out. You don't have to be afraid of the enemy. You don't have to be intimidated of the enemy. You don't have to worry about spite, revenge, backstabbing. You don't have to worry about them planning all kind of crap against you. Why? Because no matter what their plans are, God's got them. God's got their number, and God knows just what it'll take to knock them down to their knees and face in the dust. The Lord will have your enemies eating your dust, baby. He will have them on the ground eating dirt. So you don't have to worry about anybody that rises up against you. And you have to remember, a lot of these little things you're going through in life, a lot of the people you have to battle with, situations you got to battle with, your own fears you have to battle with. Guess what, baby? God is honing you. These experiences are allowed for two main reasons. For you to know who God really is in the whole equation of things. And for you to know who you are and where your growth level is, your development, your developmental stages of growth and maturity. Growth, maturity, and strength. The list goes on ad infinitum, so I'm not even going to attempt to describe all that to you. But the bottom line is, God is doing a deep work in you while you're going through the deep miry clay where it seems like all hell is breaking loose in your life or people are coming against you or situations rise that you that that's got you almost pulling your hair out at the root. Life can baffle you. We know it. Life can buckle you down to your knees. But that's a good place to be. Because that's where you can reach God, baby. When your spirit is on his knees and you're crying out to God for help, God's going to hear you. There's nothing going on in your life or mine that will baffle God. He is not surprised by the coming events. He is not dumbfounded or shocked by whatever can jump off the planet. He is not shocked. He's not surprised. He already knew all this stuff. He's already got your plans laid out. That's why you have to go to him. He will tell you where to go, what to say, and what to do. He'll tell you. But you have to learn always to acknowledge him in all your ways so he can direct your paths. Don't lean to your own understanding because that'll get you in trouble. 
Don't get caught up in the winds and the waves. Don't change your focus and look at the problem. Please don't do that because you don't want to miss God's directions. You don't want to miss his traffic lights. You don't want to miss his signal. You don't want to miss the unction of the Holy Spirit by getting caught up in the fear of your flesh. All right. So know that whatever's going on in your life, God's got you. He's got you covered. He's got your back. He's ahead of you, making the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. He's ahead of you, paving out the pathway because he knows where he's taking you. And he knows how to get you there. He knows who to use and who to remove. He knows. So whatever happens, don't look at it as a bad thing. Look at it as, okay, Lord, what are you getting ready to do now? What are you getting ready to show me? Broaden my faith so I can pray bigger prayers, so I can see bigger miracles. I want to see what you can do on my behalf. And you'd be surprised the miracles you'll begin to see. You will find your enemies buckling down. And you're wondering, how did that happen? I didn't throw a punch. Why are they crying? I didn't cuss them out. I didn't tell them off. I didn't retaliate. Because you don't know what God's doing, baby. And God knows how to get through to your enemies at their own level, in their own language, in a way that they get it. They get the memo, baby, and they won't lose that memo because that memo is going to take them to the woodshed and they're going to be sorry they ever mess with you because God's going to let them know just why they're suffering. So know what God is about and he's about having your back. You hear me? Trust him. He's right there on your behalf, working things out. Don't fear. Don't be dismayed. There are no giants. There's nothing in existence, in space, on earth, or in hell that's bigger than God. You hear me? All right. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me get an amen on that one. That's right. And nothing shall by any means harm you. So you lift your head up and you remember who God is. God is able. Mm, mm, mm. All right. God bless you.